the previous unit, we mentioned the independent life of Patriarch Afraham, which contains the Mukatta miracle story that has been so crucial for Father Samaran's project. We've also seen that the modest and saintly Tana, or cobbler, was called Samaran, the same name that the priest in our own times chose when he was ordained. We have also given you some insight into more technical matters, such as the issue of the manuscripts that contain the Muqattam story. Now, several of these later manuscripts contain a further remark about the disappearance of the Khalif and Mu'iz. The Egyptians made the proverb out of it. If a person cursed his son, he would say to him, May God will that you go out from before me and that your departure be that of the ruler who went out and never returned. Please remember the term the ruler by which the caliph is mentioned here. We'll come back to this in just a little while. Things get really interesting here. They show, once again, how rewarding it can be to trace the various versions of a story and to see how a story could develop over time. The last difference we'd like to discuss here is that the scribe even changed the caliph's very identity. Now, how could that happen? In the first place, at least one of these scribes must have noticed that there was a problem of chronology in the story. He apparently knew that the Patriarchate of Abraham from 975 to 978 could not possibly have coincided with the caliphate of al Muaz who arrived in Cairo in 969 and died six years later in 975, just before Abraham's consecration. Therefore, the scribe must have considered the name of al muaz to be a writing error or a corruption, as we call it in the jargon of textual criticism, for Al-Aziz, which is the name of al muaz son and successor, who ruled from 975 to 996. Notably, this is the case in a quotation from the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria in the Topographical Encyclopedia of the Churches and Monasteries of Egypt attributed to Abu al-Makarim, which was presented earlier on in the unit dedicated to the miraculous portrait of Jesus found in Constantinople. Remember? But there is more with respect to the identity of the Caliph who reportedly became a Christian and a monk. The versions of the miracle account that we're talking about here sometimes refer to the Caliph al muaz simply by the term the ruler, as we pointed out before. The Arabic word for the ruler is al-hakim. And this brings us back to the passage on the proverbial disappearance of the Caliph quoted a little while ago. It is particularly in that passage that this word al-hakim is used in a way that makes it look like a proper name so that you could translate it as May God will that you go out from before me and that your departure be that of Al-Hakim who went out and never returned. Now this is truly amazing because Al-Hakim, the ruler, or more precisely Al-Hakim bi Amrullah, the one who rules on God's command, was the name of by far the most controversial of the successive Fatimid Imam Caliphs. One of our ICAP team members, Nagla Hamdi, has done her PhD research on the image of Al-Hakim in Copto-Arabic literature. She will say something about him now. Al-Hakim ruled from 996 to 1021. According to most specialists, he is the major exception to the Fatimids' favorable treatment of the non-Muslim communities. In fact, he is notorious for his persecution of Jews and Christians, for the destruction of their houses of worship, but also for unrelated measures such as food restrictions and his sometimes violently enforced ban on the free movement of women. But most of all, it was this Imam Caliph al-Hakim, who according to several Muslim sources, had disappeared in mysterious circumstances, precisely in the desert area behind the Mukatta mountain. Medieval Muslim Egyptian chroniclers, as well as historians in our own times, have suggested a variety of rational explanations for this mystery. But, be that as it may, his enigmatic disappearance has also had its impact on Egyptian popular imagination and folklore, 
In a popular narrative called The Sirat al-Hakim ba'amrillah, The Biography of al-Hakim ba'amrillah, like other such popular stories, it was transmitted orally as well as in manuscripts. In its earliest preserved copies from the 15th century, Al-Hakim wanted to find a treasure, and one of his adversaries trapped him by taking him to the Mukattam area and abandoning him there forever. This failed treasure hunt is just one of many stereotypes of such imaginary tales. But interestingly, as late as the 17th century, a German traveler named Van Sleben said that a cult had guided him to the treasure of Al-Hakim, which was hidden in this very same desert to the east of the Mukattam, guarded by an enchanted crocodile. But to come back to the Coptic tradition that we're discussing here, it is striking that in at least two manuscripts the story is told in such a way that clearly Al-Hakim no longer means the ruler in general, but refers specifically to Al-Hakim bi Amrullah. These manuscripts contain an account largely identical to the version studied here, and they also contain not only a systematic substitution of Al Mu'izz's name by that of Al Hakim, but also introductory remarks that explicitly date the narrated events to his caliphate. In a recent article, published in our collective book on the non-Muslim communities in Fatimid Egypt, Marian Shenouda has studied and identified one of these versions as a distinct Al-Hakim narrative of the Mukatta miracle account. This leads her to suggest that the departure of Al-Hakim, a proverbial cause, became the pride of Copts who knew the secret of the converted Caliph. So, the very identity of the Muslim ruler in the story has changed in some of the versions. In the next unit, we will take a look at what else happened to the story in more recent times. <laughs>